Imaginers, thank you for tuning in live. Uh, please let me know if you can see me and hear me okay. I want to make sure everything is coming through really well. Um, now, if you're watching this on Facebook, please know that we are using Restream to power this live stream. So before leaving a comment, please grant Restream permissions to see your name. Uh, just go to chat.restream.io slash FB. Uh, you only have to do it once. Never, never again, and we can see your name. Otherwise, we will see the name Facebook user. Um, now, we want to know where you're tuning in from and what you are photographing this weekend. Uh, we want to know. So please comment with that as well. Now, if you have any questions or demo requests for us during the live stream, please comment and ask. That is what this is all about. And if you're watching the replay or if a friend shared this with you, well, I'm happy you are here. It's a bummer you can't comment live but you'll know you're watching the restream because it will say I was live instead of I am live. Um, <laughs> and if you are watching the replay, please comment with the word replay so that we know that you watch the replay and because that would be fun too. Okay, so let's see. Um, we get any comments. Uh, we've got uh, Josh from Nashville, Tennis Knoxville, Tennis Tennessee. Did I say Knox Nashville? What did I just say? I oh, mean, see, I can take in Josh and Knox and switching things up. Well, welcome, Josh. Um, glad you're here from Tennessee. Um, I already see questions coming in, so that's great. Now, we've got some fun things to share with you today. Um, and yeah, so I've got a couple pre-submitted questions. I have uh, one question currently in the comments, but we want more questions. So whatever questions you have, please, <laughs> um, please be sure to comment with those. It looks like we've got Liz. Also from Knoxville as well. That's really cool. Why aren't you guys shooting together? You should. You should. <laughs> this is it's always fun when people are in the same place. Um, Josh and Liz are is Knoxville a, a, a big town, big city? Um, I'm curious. Curious to know. Um, okay, so uh, I am gonna get right down to the first thing that I want to share now. You might have seen it on, uh, you might have gotten the email, you might have seen it on the Facebook page, maybe on Midsize, it's a Midsize Town. Oh, we got Pr Preston. Preston from Pennsylvania. Pocono is Pennsylvania. Nice. Um, okay. Um, yeah, so uh, you might have seen the first chapter of our new documentary series called Focus on What You Love. Now, if you did not see the video, we're going to premiere it in the right now in the live for the first time uh, live. Actually, this is a fun experiment. We've never done this before. Um, we're going to premiere the first video, chapter one, with John Branch IV right now. Uh, I hope that you enjoy this, uh, this film that we have produced. There's more in the works. Please keep, while you're watching, please get your questions coming. Um, and uh, we'll get to your answers right after this video. I'm John Branch IV, and I'm a wedding photographer and YouTube content creator. I've been shooting weddings for eight years now, and I reside in the Raleigh, North Carolina area. Absolutely love it here, and I'm born and raised. You don't find too many of us. I live here with my wife and my four kids, ranging all from the ages of eight down to six months. As far as nicknames, I go by Daddy Bear, or my granddad name that I want once I'm a granddad is gonna be Puddin' Pops. I got into photography about eight years ago, mainly because my wife wanted to stay home with our kids. So this was right when we first started having children. And I had a job at the time, but she told me instead of getting another job to start a business. And that's when I started really taking photography seriously. Wedding photography for me was always a strong pull, mainly because I'm the eldest child of the eldest child. So because of that, when all my aunts and uncles were getting married, I was pretty much always the ring bearer. I think the thing I love most about photography is taking things out of context. I love the fact that your lens only sees but so much, 
and with a nice blurry background or depending on how you frame it, you can take a dirty alleyway and make it look like the coolest photo ever. Success for me has always meant having my own time to spend with my family. Basically getting my bills paid, getting these little mouths fed, and having time to actually spend with them. Outside of that, being like the best photographer in the world really doesn't matter to me. In my spare time, if I'm not spending it with my children, I actually play a lot of video games. Between that and also working out, it's probably the top level stuff. Since my business is kind of twofold between wedding photography and also YouTube content, with Imagine, I have a lot more time to dedicate to the YouTube content because I'm not spending so much time editing. I always have been a huge fan of Asian food, which luckily my wife is half Chinese, so she cooks a lot of it at home as well. Here's a random fact about me that most people don't know. I actually prefer using chopsticks than forks. We really hope that you enjoyed that amazing uh, film that uh, we we produced with John Branch IV. We've got more of those in the works, and uh, we can't wait to share them with you. But we also want to know what you like love to do uh, when you got all this free time now that Imagine is editing your photos. Um, so definitely comment, share. We want to hear it. Okay. So let's get to some of these questions that we've got here. I'm going to go start with the pre-submitted questions. The first one is uh, from the community. Afton asks, um, are there any plans to incorporate Adobe's subject sky masks as part of the Imagine workflow? So um, there are plans to do local adjustments and support basically retouching uh, inside of Lightroom. We are working on it. We are starting with the brush tool first. Um, and once we confirm everything is working well, uh, everything is solid, we will then port over what we're doing uh, to, uh, from the brush to other local adjustments as well and other you know, retouching tools. So things like that will be coming. We are taking our time to do it correctly. We want to make sure it's done correctly for you, not to rush it out um, because you don't want to rush out things. You don't want to rush out things. It's not, not so good to do that. So we're going to take our time, make sure it's done correctly and done in a way where it truly enhances your workflow um, and, and all that fun stuff. Ooh, hello, Amber from Savannah, Georgia. Nice to see you here. Um, OK, so um, please keep your questions coming. Let me uh, pop this up on the screen. OK, um, so the second pre-submitted question, also from the community, is Ashley, uh, who says, um, uh, I currently use a color profile and preset to edit all of my photos. Wait, is this the same Ashley that just commented? <laughs> One second. Nope, it's not. Different Ashley. <laughs> oh, no, that was Amber that just commented. See? Just so many, so many uh, great, great comments and great uh, attendees today. This is awesome. Um, I currently use a color profile and preset to edit all of my photos. Do I import the profile and preset into Imagine? Or will the app already factor this? Uh, when I can uh, upload the completed 5,000 images. So custom color profiles, for example, from Mastin Labs, which uses uh, custom color profiles, Develop, which uses custom color profiles. We do not currently support custom color profiles, meaning the built-in ones that Lightroom has is Adobe Standard, Adobe Vibrant, things like that. Uh, those we support currently. The custom ones from these other companies, we do not currently support, but we do learn how you edit with them in place. So what that means is that um, we will give you back the edits as if that custom color profile was there. And then all you have to do is go in to, uh, is go into that collection that you just had edited, click on the first photo, add in the custom color profile, then select them all, you know, like using shift and clicking to the end and then auto sync across the board. So in two seconds, you could add that custom color profile to all of your photos. That's the temporary workaround until we fully support it. We are working on fully supporting it. There is, it is a, a process to fully support custom color profiles, but it is coming. 
So, uh, so yeah, it is coming. Um, okay, let's get to some of the commented questions. Yes, Preston, I did receive your comment as well. Um, I have uh, them pinned, saved, ready to answer right now. Okay, um, so Preston asked, after receiving edits and re-uploading your catalog to Imagine, Imagine does it upload, uh, update your profile with Imagine right away? So uh, first things first, when you do your edits with Imagine, with that initial edit upload, you are sending your catalog and we are taking compressed versions of your raw files um, up to our servers in order to do the edits. Um, and then when you download them, you're not re-downloading your raw files, you're just downloading the edit data from us inject where you inject it right into Lightroom. If you fine tune um, and then want to send those final edits to us, we are not re-uploading your raw files. We are only re-uploading the edit data of what you did following what we did. So the uh, uploading your fine tunes is a very fast process, um, practically instant. With that said, do we up update your profile right away? No. Um, it takes time because you need enough data for a proper profile update. If you update right away, you're going to see poor results. You will not, you will either not see changes or you will see inaccuracies because you're only updating a little bit. AI needs a lot of data, a lot of data. So if you start with 5,000, the first, this is what we, this is what, this is how we're working currently. We're work, we're working to reduce the amount, but in the meantime, if you start with 5,000 to create your profile, to see your first uh, fine tune update, you need another 5,000 photos. To see your second fine tune update, you need 10,000 photos, and so on, it keeps doubling. So that's, as, that's how much data is needed to see a profile update. Now, if your profile has enough of those fine tunes to be updated, and you're not seeing it be updated, if you're not getting the email saying it's been updated, then Please open a ticket with support. You can do that at support.imagineai.com. Open a ticket with support. Say, I have submitted X amount of fine tunes. Can you please confirm and then update my profile? Um, at that point, if the team confirms there are enough, they will push forward your update ahead of time. Um, and the reason why it's not um, always automated exactly at the right time when there's, let's say, 5,000 additional new fine tunes is because right now we have a man in the middle. So there's literally... Our developers are, are pushing it and verifying the profiles each time. We are working on removing that man in the middle to fully automate that. That is in the pipeline that's in the works, literally in the works, to be removed um, or to be added to be removed that man in the middle issue. So um, it'll become even more automated very, very soon. Um, okay, Liz. Liz said, super interested in the stat in status of next step editing tools. I'm not exactly sure what you're asking. Are you asking for like new features that are coming like the local adjustment support or you know enhanced fine tunes? What else are you looking for? Um, is it something that we have talked about already that's coming or is it something new that you're looking for? Please let us know, or let me know rather, so that I could uh, hopefully answer that more precisely. <laughs> um, last question asked. Mahesh asked, why don't you create a mobile app? Well, we've surveyed the, the community and uh, not many are doing editing on mobile. So that's why we don't have a mobile app right now. There's potential to create one, of course. Um, if there was a drastic need for a mobile app, we would of course do it. If, our, if you know, um, majority of the imaginers wanted it, we would of course do it. Uh, but in the meantime, the demand is not there for it. I mean, what would you use the mobile app for? Like, what would you see from the mobile app? What do you want to do? Um, would it be to actually send edits? Or would it be to preview edits? Would it be to um, see status of edits? What, what exactly would you want in the mobile app, uh, Mahesh? Curious minds. Okay. Um, let's see what else we got here. Okay. Ed asks, can you provide a standard profile edit that does color correct exposure with no style? Um, I mean, you could, <laughs> but 
this has been asked in the past. You could you could create a, a profile that is literally just correcting exposure and and, and uh, white balance. You could literally create a profile that just does that, but you will be paying for um, an edit that is that that is as basic as that. Um, so I, I I'm not not sure I would recommend it, but you could do it if you want. Uh, if it was a very popular request for us to have something basic like that built in, as like a, let's say a talent profile or something, we could consider it. But again, it would be. Um, it would be something you'd be paying for. You'd be paying five cents a photo for literally white balance and exposure, which is doable. I mean, you could do it. Just take 5,000 photos, correct the white balance on each, correct exposure on each, and send it, and you'll have something that is literally um, correcting for those things. So that's, you know, it's possible. Uh, all right. Amber. I would love advice. It's hard to let go. I feel like everything has been perfect. That's why I've never hired an editor. I always feel like I might as well do it right, do it rather than pay and just redo it. Help me let it go. Um, yeah, so <laughs> this has been a topic, of course. I actually have a blog article uh, coming probably in September about this. Um, there was a topic that came up about, like, is it cheating to outsource to an editor? Um, I understand that it's hard to let go, but if you can be more productive in your business, in your personal life, and have the software edit for you, like you, then it's not really you letting go. Plus, plus, just because Imagine might edit for you doesn't mean that you're done, right? It doesn't mean that you're completely done with the job. There might be more for you to do. You might have to do some retouching. You might have to make a little bit of fine tunes to, you might have to add some vignette if you feel like you need it or blur one side if you think you need it, things like that. Um, so you're not done necessarily unless you are done, unless it's that simple for you, right? And, and that's perfectly fine if it is, but uh, let go. <laughs> Trust me, trust the, you know, the, the, the countless imaginers that are already saving so much time uh, by using Imagine for editing and, and getting back their life to focus on what they love, right? I mean, that's what we're here for. So, um, all right. Andres, are you planning to give imaginability to add radial filters or even subject-sensitive filters in Lightroom Classic? I just answered this about... Five minutes ago, yes, in due time. <laughs> we're starting with brush, and we're moving into, uh, we're starting with the local adjustment brush, and then we're moving into the others, all in due time. Will you have an unlimited plan like Aftershoot is planning? No comment. <laughs> um, uh, no comment, I'm not even getting into that. <laughs> um, I'm applying radio filters to 90% of the photos. Any plans to implement that to imagine? Yes, all in due time. Three questions that are all the same question today. That's really good. Uh, I mean, it just shows that you guys want it. So it's, it, it's in the pipeline. Um, Amber, thanks. That helps. Just do it. Did anyone else figure out why timeless color created grain? That's one I, I wanted to try. Nobody else has complained about grain and timeless color. Um, so it could be something specific to... Your photos, I mean, open the ticket with support. Have them look at your, um, that project that uh, with those photos from that, I believe it was a Canon R5, R6, if I remember correctly, right? Something like that. Um, so open a ticket, share what camera you're using. I mean, they'll see in the data anyway, but um, ask support to look at it and see if there was an obvious reason why it was grainy because nobody else has been complaining about it. So um, great question though. Um, Liz says, so I thought I saw something about a beta about another level of editing that takes it beyond the capabilities today as a portrait, no weddings at all. Photographer, I was hoping possibility for more skin smoothing or dodge burning. So that's where the local adjustment will come into play once we have it. Um, if you are um, using brushes, for example, to uh, uh, smooth skin, 
that will be something that we will learn from in, in over time. So we will be beta testing, um, basically through a talent profile, we'll be beta testing local adjustment that's not personalized before we add the personalization feature into it. Um, oh, Amber, it wasn't your job. Okay, well, <laughs> I do remember the post though. Um, great. Uh, any other questions that I can answer? I have one more fun thing to share. Um, any other questions? Any way? Okay, here we go. Any, uh, any way Imagine learns to apply noise reduction? Um, I believe we're doing noise reduction, but like if you're not doing noise reduction on every single photo, it's not going to be applied to your profile. Um, I believe we're doing noise reduction. We, I need to check with support on that to confirm, but I'm fairly confident that we are. But again, like if you're doing noise reduction on, let's say, 10% of your of your photos, then in your in your profile, it's not going to add noise reduction because it's not used throughout every single photo. It's not a, an editing style thing. It's a it's a per image thing at that point. Um, when I created a catalog for when I create a catalog for a job, do I add all photos or just the ones I need edited? You could add all photos. You could definitely add all, all photos, and you could use star ratings, colors, flags, whatever you want to, to say which one um, you, um, which one you want edited inside the Imagine app. Let me show you that right now. Okay, so we are inside the Imagine app right now, and um, if I go to create a new project. Let's delete this one, a test project. Okay, we go to create a new project, choose a catalog. And then you can see here I have, let's say 4,004 photos. I can then go into the filters and say, I don't need any star ones. And that it dropped, excuse me, it dropped to 3,514 photos. So you can add them all and just use the Lightroom attributes and you can filter them in here, flags, labels, color labels, star ratings, uh, all in here you could do and it'll tell you you know which ones are not included because of the reason So if I'm gonna go back to all four you can see now it says 70 77 photos were not included because of the rating um, No, it's five stars. There we go. Now it's at the full. Okay, so yes, you could do it however you like um, So you're using uh, ISO uh, noise reduction on anything over ISO 3200. So this is again like if it's selective, it's not going to be added to your profile because you're not doing it on all photos. If you're only shooting at ISO 3200 and that profile was made on only photos shot at that where you're, where you're adding noise reduction, then you'd probably be seeing noise reduction on, on all, of the, um, all of that. How can you become a talent? Well, um, if you go to support, support.imagineai.com and you search for talent, You'll see there's a post that talks about uh, your talent profiles or like what talent profiles are and how you can either apply to be one or submit somebody to be a talent profile. Um, I do have something else on that, that um, we are in search for a uh, talent profile that is based on JPEGs. It has been highly requested for a JPEG talent profile. So. If you are a uh, photographer who shoots in JPEG and edits in JPEG in Lightroom Classic, and you have a large data set of edits that are all consistent editing style, and you want to apply to be a talent for a JPEG profile, please get in touch. Uh, please fill out the form that you can access through the support. Um, I'm actually, let me bring that up. I'll just bring that up right now. Hold on one second. So that everybody can see what I'm talking about. Uh, uh, all right, let's move that. Share screen. Okay. Okay, so um, if I search for talent, what are talent profiles? I believe this is the one. 
What are talent profiles? And you go down to the bottom. You'll see, you can let us know if you want, if you would like to see a talent, uh, see a photographer style as added as one of our talent AI profiles. Click here. It'll actually open a, a form. Complete this form. We've got to update this logo. Um, complete this form. Put in, if it's you that you want to apply, put in your name, link to your Instagram, explain why you like this, why, uh, explain the style if it's your style. Otherwise, if it's somebody else that you like, explain why you like their style. Um, so that is how you could basically apply for to be a talent. Um, not everybody's going to be accepted, of course, but um, we are looking for a JPEG talent because it's been requested a lot. So um, if you fit the bill, <laughs> please let us know. Okay, uh, Amber, great question. Is there a minimum per job? Can I pick a few from each part of a wedding and see how it does before I submit a whole wedding? Yes, um, there is no minimum per job. You can submit one photo, you can submit 10 photos. It doesn't make a difference. Um, so submit as little or as much as you want for your testing. And again, yeah, you can choose from a part of a wedding. It's all completely up to you what you want to do. No problem at all. Um, oh, I skipped one. I'll have to go back. Um, Josh, I don't, but I definitely shoot raw and JPEG most of the time. Uh, um, so if you're shooting raw and JPEG, I'm assuming you're editing the raws in Lightroom, not the JPEGs. Um, Okay, Ed, my edits differ sometimes when it's hard light versus soft light. How can Imagine handle that? How did Imagine handle for that? Um, so you're saying the edits that Imagine does is different from your profile between hard light and soft light. That will be something you'll have to um, check with support to see what, um, how the profile is made with what photos. Um, if it was made with you know, um, photos with hard light versus soft light that the edits are different, then the, the profile may be inaccurate. So definitely check with support um, to see if, uh, if, if that's the case. Just again, support.imagine.ai.com to, uh, to check. Um, oh, you edit differently. So make two different profiles. If you edit, if you edit differently for uh, hard light versus soft light, definitely make two different profiles, not just one, um, because then you'll have inaccuracies. Um, Amber, so sorry if you talked about this. Can you please explain fine tuning again? Sure. So um, let's see. I don't have a job currently there that I could do this with. Let's do this. Um, let's do this. Share screen window. Imagine. Okay, fine tuning. Gonna make a new project. And I'm going to do a collection, and I'm going to do Phoebe and Mike. Okay. And I'm going to choose uh, my profile, and it's going to be 31 photos. I'm going to hit Add, Upload, let those go. Um, now, fine-tuning, basically, when you have your own personal AI profile, this does not work with talent profiles. When you have a personal AI profile, if... Uh, you get the edits back, and they're a little bit off. Basically, what's going to happen is if you need to adjust the vibrancy or adjust the contrast or HSL, whatever it is, you make your adjustments in Lightroom after you've downloaded your edits. Okay? Um, upload finished already. So you make your adjustments in Lightroom after the downloads, uh, after the, your edits are downloaded into Lightroom. And then once that's done, you then go back to, to Imagine and I'll show you what uh, what will happen in a second. Um, once the the editor these, these edits are done, uh, I'll bring into Lightroom, I'll make some adjustments, and you'll see. But basically, um, you will make the edits in Lightroom, bring them back into Imagine, hit the upload final edits button, and then it'll actually fine tune the profile over time, not instantly, over time, to update with your preferred changes. So if you do prefer a little bit more vibrancy then your profile will be updated over time with more vibrancy. Um, so we've seen a lot of people with have great success with that, getting them from 75% um, you know, completion to like 80 to 90 and so on, depending on, on the, uh, the profile and the volume of changes and things like that. So the edits are done. I'm gonna hit download edits. Um, let me just quickly see. Okay, so no five stars, okay. 
Edits are done. I'm going to open Lightroom. Oh, let me uh, stop that screen share real quick because I got to share my whole screen. <clears throat> Let that load. Lovely Adobe taking a little bit of time, unfortunately. Okay, here it goes. Um, it was Phoebe and Mike I did, I believe. Okay. And then no five stars. So let's... Okay. So the edit should be popping in. Okay, edits are popping in. Um, now, we see the photo, right? So this one came out a little bit dark, right? So I'm going to fine tune it by bumping up this exposure to make it match better. It's still a little bit dark, go up a little bit more. Um, and you can see these are okay, these are okay. All good, right? So I made this one adjustment, right? There's one photo where it was just a little bit too dark. Let's say two, I'm gonna bring this one up a little bit as well. Now, I made those, those changes to the 31 photos that were edited, and then I'm going to close Lightroom, okay? Now I've got Imagine back here. Let's uh, maximize that. Got Imagine back here. I'm gonna hit Upload Final Edits. Now you can see, it's again, pre-selected, 31. I'm going to Upload Final Edits, and it's done. That's it. And now it archived that project here. Um, basically, uh, what I just did is I told the profile, I prefer my exposure to be more like this. Um, and I only changed the, the one that was too dark. So I'm, I'm teaching the AI over time that, you know, it, it needs to be this, not what it is currently. Um, I hope that explains it for you. Um, Josh, if I use a talent profile and have uh, to adjust it Will it start learning how I adjust it even if I'm using the talent profile as I start fine-tuning? No, talent profiles cannot be fine-tuned. So um, we have a video that uh, is um, not live yet, <laughs> but it will be soon, um, that uh, is talking about how you can take the edits from that Imagine did with a uh, talent profile for you and then turn it into a personal AI profile. So. If you do 5,000 edits with a talent profile, let's say it's um, uh, Clean and Crisp, which is uh, Susan Stripling's profile. You, you, you did um, 5,000 photos edited with that profile. You've made some adjustments to your liking. Now you can take those 5,000 photos that we've edited for you, because we know the edit data. Um, it's in Lightroom. You can then create a new profile, a new personal AI profile based on that. Um, and there, at that point, you can then fine tune that further and further and further. Now, if you've done, let's say three or four weddings with a talent profile, you probably have 5,000 or more photos already edited, ready to go. So again, the more the better to create the profile. 5,000 is the minimum to create a profile. Amber, okay, cool. So if you have beach weddings and darker wooded weddings, as long as I include both in the profile, uh, images should do what, uh, images should know what to do for each. So um, if the editing style that you teach is the same for dark, darker or beach weddings, if the editing style is the same, then yes, it will be able to know what to do. If it's dramatically different, then it's gonna make the profile inaccurate. Um, so always try to include, when you're creating a profile, edits that are the same style, right? Same, same uh, tone curve, um, similar contrast, similar vibrancy, and, and so on across the board. Uh, HSL, all that stuff. Um, okay, so any final questions before I share the final thing that I want to share today um, on the live? Any final questions? Now is a good time to ask before we wrap it up. Um, all you got to do is comment with your question. I'm gonna give it a minute <laughs> before I get into the last thing I wanna talk about before we wrap it up. Um, oh, I should also mention, next week there will be no live stream. 
I am taking a vacation. <laughs> um, I am not working at all next week. Uh, so um, no live stream next week. We will be dropping the next um, Focus on What You Love video from for our, our new documentary series. Um, and if you look on YouTube, you'll see a little teaser. It's actually on Susan Stripling. We're very excited about it. Um, so, so yeah. Um, that will be dropping next week, even though I will not be in the office, so to speak. But, uh, but yeah. No live stream next week. Okay. Um, Sean. HSL settings change for color correction purposes. So can the AI adjust to different HSL levels based on the circumstances of the photos? Yeah, so if you actually look at, uh, let's say, Su uh, Sarah Edmonds' profile, and you edit, let's say, 100 photos with it, you'll see the HSL is adjusting per photo. It stays within a certain range um, based on her profile, but it adjusts plus one, plus two for the different HSL levels um, as needed. So um, HSL is one of those areas that in a style, in an editing style, doesn't, train, doesn't change dramatically for each photo, it shouldn't. Um, so you will, but so you will see changes, but it won't be dramatic changes in the edits that are done. Um, but yes, yes. Um, tone curve, by the way, is an area that rarely changes for an editing style. So right now, when you fine tune, tone curve will not change. Uh, but um, we we're considering the ability to to do that in the future. If I edit warm always, will it try to use the same white balance I use? How about color calibration, like film, like uh, gr film, like greens and stuff? So again, um, white balance will come across as a Kelvin. It's not going to be like daylight or tungsten. It's going to be a Kelvin temperature um, with like you know the temp and tint and all that stuff as well, all in play, and all that adjusts per photo. So if I was to bring up, I'll show you an example. To bring this back up. This is a great question. Sorry, it's got a load. I should have just left it open. I don't know why I closed it. <laughs> I should have just left it open. Note to sell for the next time. Okay, so this is one of my favorite um, collections to demonstrate because flash misfires left and right in this. Um, so this one, you will see um, custom white balance. You know, the temp and tint, 7201 plus three. Next photo, plus three, but 6649, right? Look at the difference between the two, okay? Um, so it will adjust flash fire, flash mis misfire, right? You're gonna see differences. This was a misfire, this was a flash fire. So it adjusted the temperature, they look the same, um, everything was adjusted. I don't think I use HSL, oh yes I did. So you can see HSL here between these two, did not change. Let's see if it changes at all for me. Yeah, so it didn't need to in these. Um, but yeah, but uh, but white balance did change there. Um, is the same true for calibration settings for color correction? Yeah, so that's what I just showed. You both asked the same question at the same time, basically, just in different ways. <laughs> nice going. Uh, yeah, yeah, it changed, it changed. Um, and by the way, the custom color profile that I was talking about, that's this. Um, you could add a bunch of custom ones in there. You can see I've got some from On1. Um, I've got a, ma uh, uh, I think I had a Mastid in here somewhere. Or maybe I don't, but yeah. So um, we currently only support the, the basic ones that are in here from Adobe, but we will support custom ones soon. All right, um, I am going to wrap it up with one final thing, one final thing, and this is something that um, a lot of people have been asking, and now I can talk about a little bit. Uh, oh, wait, okay, Amber has one more question. So if I te tweak the tone curve always, imagine it won't touch it. Currently, we will not adjust your tone curve um, with fine tuning, but we plan to down the road um, because f uh, tone curve is something that will dramatically change your editing style. So it's not something that would um, would be a light, you know, minor change. That's something like once you change a tone curve, your entire photo looks different. So 
that's why we have um, kept it consistent in fine tuning. But we're we're it's been there's been requests for tone curve adjustment, so we're we're thinking about doing that um, down the road. Josh, one more question. Okay, I love that you guys are asking all these questions. Does the AI start to learn how you adjust your white balance a lot of times? When they get back, uh, they tend to be more cooler and greener. More, uh, I'm more of a warm. Yeah. So, if you adjust it in your fine tunes every single time, then yes, we will learn it over time for sure. For sure. Okay. Um, something that you've all been waiting for is. <laughs> uh, man, this is, this is exciting that I get to actually talk about this. Um, so. We have been working nonstop to get the calling beta in the hands of everybody who requested the beta. It's not ready to test yet. Sorry, that's not what this announcement is. Um, so, but I do have this update for you. I have a little bit of an update and we're gonna email everybody who signed up for the beta with this update as well, but figured I'd share it here for everybody who uh, was interested. So, as you know, imagine our, our goal is basically to um, to help photographers, photographers like you, um, to to spend more of your time, your energy, your talent, your skills, doing what you love by using modern editing workflows like what we produce for you at Imagine. So we are using our proprietary algorithms and based on the interviews that we've had, user testing we've had, and lots of data points, we have formulated an innovative approach for culling that will optimize and speed up your workflows for post-production processes. So you are going to be able to cull and edit your photos easily, efficiently, using one software, reducing the post-production processing time by 75%. We're very excited about this. Um, and I only have three screenshots to share with you right now. That's it. I can't share much more yet. Um, but this is the first one that you'll see inside the app. You'll see introducing Imagine Culling. That will, uh, this will be, this is the beta basically, where you'll actually see um, that you can start testing culling, right? Then uh, another screen that I can share with you is this, where you can sit, you can see the star, star rating choices. Um, yes, you have the option of color labels, but um, star choices are here. I personally use stars for everything. Um, I've had my own methodology for star, star calling, basically, and I'm excited to be able to use it inside of uh, an Imagine's calling feature. Um, and, the last thing I want to share uh, is the download screen that you can see here. You can review it inside of Lightroom. Now, um, what's really cool is that we are offering the flexibility of review options. So you'll be able to fully review your, your calls inside of Lightroom, just like you know you were doing it if you're doing it manually, right? Um, or, or you will be able to have it saved with XMP files to review in any other app that you want um, that recognizes XMP files with your raw files or your JPEG files, depending on what you shoot in. So it's very exciting that uh, I, I'm able to share this with you. Now, you might be wondering, when can you expect the beta? Um, I don't have an exact date, but we are aiming for uh, fall of 2022. And uh, yeah. It's fun, it's exciting, um, really cool what, what's been happening, and uh, lots of really fun stuff to really enhance your workflow coming. So I hope you enjoyed that little bit of a teaser. I know you've a lot of been asking for culling updates, and unfortunately, I don't have too many, but hopefully that was a nice little, um, you know, update for you to, you know, set, set your mind at ease, so to speak. Um, now, with that, uh, I appreciate everybody who tuned in live. Thank you all for the questions, uh, Sean and Amber and Josh. Uh, who else asked a question? I, I really appreciate it. Ed, you asked questions. Uh, Till, um, uh, did I miss anybody? Preston, thank you so much, everybody, for asking questions, for tuning in. 
again, if you're watching the replay, just comment with replay so I know that you uh, so you watched. Uh, I hope, that, again, you also enjoyed John's video. Stay tuned on uh, Monday for the next video. You will not see me next week. I will be on vacation not looking at a computer screen. Um, <laughs> uh, but uh, you will see me back the week after with another live, and I can't wait to see you then. Um, yeah, thank you, every thanks, everybody, again.